Oh, oh, oh. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we celebrating the coming in of the last day of your holy feast day, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for just giving us a mind to even be here, Lord. A, a will to want to serve you in all your ways, Lord. To try to please you and do right by you. Lord, to follow through all your feast days, all your commandments, and give all you glory, all, give you all the glory and all the honor, Lord. Lord, we thank you for we do this because it is truly in our heart, Lord. For we do not do this for fame. We do not do this for to boast in ourselves, Lord. But we do this because this is something that you commanded us to do before we were even formed in our mother's womb, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for this this very special opportunity, Lord. And giving us the chance to dwell amongst like-minded people, Lord, to be able to increase our knowledge, our wisdom, and our understanding in all in all areas, and not just some. Lord, I'm just asking that you bring our scripture back to our leaders' remembrance, Lord. Allow his words to flow smoothly and freely. Continuously to bless him each and every day. Place your hand upon his head, Lord. And Lord, I'm just asking that all those that are in this place, even those that are watching us during this time, Lord, that their hearts be changed and that their minds be forever, forever better. Lord, I'm just asking. I thank you for the woman that are known the freedom of our living Savior and that you just continuously to bless those, even those that are not able to make it today, Lord. Lord, we're just asking that you just continuously to bless us for we've eaten unleavened bread for seven days, Lord. Lord, there are promises that you said that you would do for us in this season as long as we did our part, Lord, if we held fast to your word and that we did according to the scripture. Lord, we're just looking for miraculous blessings in this season, Lord, that you withhold nothing from us, Lord, that every angle that we turn, Lord, that you're sending your angels to open the door for us that we may walk through. Lord, I'm just asking that you just continue to bless us, lead and guide us, and strengthen us in all areas. And y'all just now pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout of hallelujah. Lift your hands toward heaven and give him a shout of hallelujah. Truly, he's worthy of all that we could ever render unto him on tonight. We bless God for you on tonight. To all of you all that's already viewing us on tonight, we bless God for you. We're so grateful and thankful to God Almighty for all of you all that you take time to, uh, take me up a little bit, that you take time out to, to view us and to listen to the word of God on tonight. So listen, it fills my heart with joy so much and just to let you know that we're praying for you uh and just to just just that we're praying for you so we're going to get ready to get in this on tonight into the word of god meaning since we've been talking all week long in this season about the death barrier and the resurrection of our living savior there's much more that i have to say about it Many other scriptures, we've used one or two foundational scriptures and we ran with them and in and out of other ones. But we've talked, saints, about the covenant and about the blood and about salvation and everything that he did. And still, there are many other scriptures. This is the third message in this season within these last 10 days that I'm going to, that we've been talking with them. I want to talk to you again on tonight, and I want to show you this. I want to talk, last night we talked about the suffering of the Messiah from which our salvation came. Sabbath day we talked about the blood of the new covenant, who was Christ, our Passover. And I want to come back and talk to you. Give me that. Let me see what I got in there. I want to come back and talk to you about the same thing on tonight. In line, the blood of the new covenant again, this time Christ, our Passover. And saints, I could go on and on with this because so many prophets prophesied about him. All of the things that he did for us. But again, by the, with this being the last night, 
I want you to know that this covenant, a blood covenant, is an everlasting covenant. The only way anyone come out under it is only through death. And that's what I want you to see tonight. I came on the last Sabbath and talked to you about this one. I want to show you some more stuff in here, other scripture to where other writers talked about the exact same thing. And let it be a help and blessing to you on tonight. God bless you, brother. And let's get into this uh, on tonight. Let's start with our foundation of scripture in 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, give me my Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And this time we're going to read all of them. Since this being the last day, you don't have a, you don't have a, a daughter. Did you make a copy of the thing? Okay, well, I need him. Cedric need one. Let's start this in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And to those of you on the journey, we bless God for you. If you would like to co like a copy of our message so that you can go along with us, we're welcome and send it to you, gladly send it to you. But 1 Corinthians chapter 5, our foundation scripture on tonight. And we're going to start reading at verse number 6 tonight. 1 Corinthians 5 and verse number 6. Since this is the last day, we've only been doing verse 7, but let's start this in verse 6 tonight, brother, and we'll close it with, in, with this tomorrow with verse 6. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Now, I'm going to talk to you about that tomorrow. Just a little bit of leaven will mess up everything. I'm going to show you that tomorrow as we close this and what God requires of you. Uh, let's go ahead on with it. Verse number 7 says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. Mm -hmm. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Keep going. Verse 8, yes. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. Now that's the thing, saints. Now we, we, we're at the last day, and I pray to God that you did this. I made a declaration to you of what my plans are to continue in, and I pray to God... That I'll be able to walk them. I know he's going to give me the strength to be able to do it. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Read it, verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. We had, this sincerity and truth have been laid out to you all week long. So there's no excuse. So let's go into this on today, tonight, and talk about this. The blood of the new covenant... Even Christ, our Passover. So let's let's deal with this on tonight. And, and I want to show you this, how the blood of the new covenant, Christ, our Passover, he's the blood of the new covenant. Let's deal with this. Jeremiah chapter 31, and pay close attention to these scriptures as we go in. Jeremiah 31, and I'm going to try not to deal with them as much for time's sake. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse number 1, brother. Jeremiah 31 and verse number 1. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel. How many people said it? Of all the families of Israel. Listen, he's still trying to do it tonight, saints. Some won't let him. Don't, they don't want, everybody don't want him or won't accept him. Now, this is God the Son and even God the Father. He's trying to be a God to all of the families of Israel. Read it. And they shall be my people. Hmm. Thus saith the Lord. The people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. All right, and we're going to get that. Come on down to verse number 7. For thus saith the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob. Go, and, go ahead and do it and tell him again, Cedric. Sing with gladness for Jacob. Uh -huh. And shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. That's what we're asking him to do. But come on down to verse number 31. I want to show you what God is going to do here in verse number 31. I'm going to show you how he's going to save the people. I talked to you about this the other night. Christ, from whom your salvation came. I want to show you something. I talked to you last night about the sufferings of the Messiah, from whom your salvation came. I want to show you how he's going to save his people. He tried it all the way from the beginning, and they didn't listen to it. But verse number 31 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Do it again, Cedric. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Now listen, what is this new covenant that he's going to make with the house of Israel that's going to give them salvation? This is what I want to know about. Finish your text, brother. 
and with the house of Judah, hmm. not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. What did they do, Cedric? Which my covenant they break. What did they do? They break. Listen here. You won't break this next one that he going to make with you. <laughs> you did that. You messed up the tassels. You messed up the thing that was on your go gate post and your lifters. You messed up the commandments. You messed up every all the other one that he did with you. Finish that, brother. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. Do that one one more time. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the here, Lord. Son, you had everything that you could have possibly needed, wanted, or desired. Although he was a husband to you. Finish the text. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord. Listen to it, you all. I will put my law in their inward parts hmm. and write it in their hearts. It will be their God and they shall be my people. He going to write his law in your mind. It ain't no more that Brother Mark got to try everything that he can do to convince people to live according to God's rule. Won't be any more of that. Brother Mark is going to sit later for all that didn't accept just the simple teaching, the simplicity of, of Christ, the simple word of God, and he's going to sit on thrones along with other brethren and judging and teaching those that didn't do this thing right here. Let's look at this in De Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. What, what did I just tell you? You see, there ain't no more, Brother Mark. Let's read it again. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, mm -hmm. and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. All of this come through the covenant, the new covenant of the blood covenant, which is Christ. I will pass over. Let's look at it in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 5. I want to show you what God said about you. And I often think about this sometimes, saints. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse number 1. Read it. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them. How much of them did he call? Seven? All Israel. Now listen, he tried to be a God to all of them before. He tried to be a husband to them. He's always getting all of the churches together. The Methodist, Baptist, Church of Christ, God in Christ, Lutheran, Presbyterian, and whatever your church might be. He's been trying to have the Bible. He's been trying to get all of you all together. Read it, brother. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, mm -hmm. that you may learn and learn them and keep and do them. Mm -hmm. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. When did he make it, Cedric? In Horeb. Mm -hmm. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. Everybody that's sitting here li listening to me tonight, it don't make no difference where you at. With us here today, the same covenant stands. This is why he's going to take it and write it in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. You're going to be without excuse on this one. Won't be able to say, didn't nobody teach me a Lord I didn't know. Hmm. Spirit of God have a job just as well. Come on down to verse number. Well, verse four, you want verse, to yeah, verse four. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. Come on down to verse 22. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount out in the mount out of the midst of the fire. All of them was there. Come on, read it, brother. Of the cloud and of the thick darkness with a great voice, and he added no more. He wrote them in two tables of stone. This and, was this was the Ten Commandments. Finish it. And delivered them unto me. And it came to pass, when ye heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that ye came near unto me, <laughs> even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And ye said, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us his glory and his greatness. And we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doeth talk with man, and he liveth. And he's still doing it today, saints. A lot of people back then, and some were just scared to hear the voice of God, thought they were going to die. Listen, if you don't have things right, that might be a good p p 
place of fear to be in. But he's not just trying to destroy you because of that. He's not willing that any man should perish. He just wants you to change and fear, reverence, godly fear, reverence him. That's all he's asking. Verse number 27 says, Go thou near, and hear all that the Lord our God shall say. And speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. That's what the people told Moses. Read on, verse 28. And the Lord heard the voice of your words. Do it again. And the Lord heard the voice of your words. God heard you when you told Moses. And let's see what God said about it. When ye spake unto me, and the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, mm -hmm. which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have Spoken. Now let's see what God said about you. Oh, that there was such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Only if that if that was in your mind to do what you said you would do. God said it would be well with you and your children for how long, brother? Forever. This is why I can't bag up on this, saints. I hadn't got promises like that from the United States government and from nobody else. Says. I hadn't got that. So I have to stand on what God has promised here. Let's look at it. Verse number 33 says, Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. This is the blessing that I want. And it don't make no difference whatever land I am until I get back to the place to where we're going. Let's go back and look at this one thing. This is the blood of the new covenant. I'm going to see if anything changes with this. I read this to you to come in the end of this season. The, these two verses here on the prayer line. But let me show you something. Exodus chapter 24 and verse number 3. Show you the things that Moses did with the people back then when he brought them under the covenant. Now this is the exact same thing that I did for you all on last Wednesday night. The evening of the 14th. I took the blood of the new covenant and put it on you. Simple things I did. Took the blood of the new covenant, put it on, the, on you, and I put you under the bond of the covenant and within the band of the covenant so that you could be protected and kept by God Almighty. Let's look at this and see what Moses did. Exodus chapter 24 and verse number 3. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord hath said will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and builded an altar under the hill hmm. and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. All of it was, come on. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and, and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins. He took half of it and put it in a basin or a bowl? And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. All right, now did he getting ready to seal this covenant with them? Read it. And he took the book of the covenant. Took the Ten Commandments. And read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord hath said will we do Listen, and be obedient. They've said that a whole bunch of time. Just like us. Mama used to get us. And we used to say, Mama, we ain't going to do it no more. We ain't going to do it no more. And as soon as tomorrow or a little bit later on come when she turned her back, <laughs> that's just the way the children of Israel. I can relate to them. I've ch no, no, I've changed now. I've been set free. I've been delivered in some more. I've been helped. Though whooping helped me. It set me free. <laughs> I learned back then, and I thank God I don't have to learn now. <laughs> read, read it. Read it, brother. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. This is the same thing that we did for your own Passover night. Took the blood of the new covenant and sprinkled the people. Let's go back over here to Jeremiah chapter 31. And I want to show you what he was talking about in this. And we're only going to look at verse number 30, yes. 37. Is that 37 or 31? It, seven. it looked like a 7. <laughs> Should be 31, maybe. Let me look at it. Let me get over it and find it here. Go back over there. Jeremiah chapter 31. You going to start with where they called him? 
Yeah, verse number, yeah. Verse 31. I want that part. I want to show you what he's going to do. Now, what Moses did was under the old thing. But I got to show you the blood of the covenant, the blood of the new covenant, Christ our Passover. Let me show you what it is. Verse number 31. Because he hath despised the word of the Lord and hath broken his covenant, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity no, no, shall be my, upon him. Jeremiah 31. Jim. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Uh, you didn't want numbers. No, no. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jeremiah 31 and 31. I'm sorry. Yeah. Listen at this, saints. I showed you what Moses just did there. Listen at this, what Jeremiah said here. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Uh-huh. Now he's he finna do something new. Now, what Moses did, wasn't nothing wrong with it. It was on the hard heart of other people. They told a story when they said all that the Lord have said we would do. They didn't hold up to their end of the bargain. Read it, verse 30, 32. 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, Listen, saith the Lord. He was a husband to them way back then, Mark Webb. Listen, and he's still trying to do the same thing now. So this is what uh, Jeremiah said in verse 31. He's going to make a new covenant with him. Let's go over here and look at it in Matthew chapter 26 and verse number 17. This is the blood of the new covenant. This is when it came in, this very moment right here, saying. Matthew chapter 26 and verse number 17, brother. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master said, My time is at hand. What was it at His what now? My time is at hand. You know why? Because he's finna be the Passover. He's finna be the ultimate sacrifice. He's finna put you in this new covenant, which is the Passover. The blood of the Passover. No greater place that you can be and nothing that you can be on the same. Verse 19 says, And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. They got ready for the Passover. Come on down to verse number 26. Let me show you how exactly how this happened. Read it. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament. What is it my blood of the new what now? Of the New Testament. Testament need covenant. This is the new covenant that he's going to make, what Jeremiah said. He was going to make a new covenant with you. Not, no, not anymore. I'm going to show you that to in a minute. Not anymore with the blood, where most of them took the blood of that animal, sprinkled the book, sprinkled the altar, and sprinkled the people. No more of that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put you on. I did this for you already. So for all that have did this, God is writing some things in the hearts of every mankind. This is the importance of all this. And I want you to see this as we leave this. Finish that, brother. Which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Verse 29. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. This is so important that the fulfillment of it is going to be fulfilled when the destroyer, the death angel, Satan himself, the roaring lion, the adversary, when he had been locked up and put up, it's going to be fulfilled. Won't be, more, won't be any more need for Passover then. You know why? Because the individual that have caused all of the sin, the killing, the chaos, and all of these terrible things, he's in the pit at that time. And this is when Christ is going to partake of the last Passover at the Father's kingdom. Let's look at this in, in Zechariah. Back up a few, few uh, pages and you'll be in Zechariah chapter 11. I want to show you something here. Zechariah chapter 11. Hold your point. We're coming right back up here to, to, to uh, Matthew. Zechariah chapter 11. And the brother's going to start reading at verse number 4. Skip huh? Skip no, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Yeah, give me what I got on there. 11 and 1. 
Pay close attention to this, saints. I told you how all of them talked about this and bringing them in and under the bond of the covenant. Read that for me, brother. 11 and 1. Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire might, may devour thy cedars. They're going to do it. Come on down to verse number 4. Thus saith the Lord my God, feed the flock of the slaughter, hmm. whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. Hmm. And they that sell them say, blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. I wonder who are those people. Shepherds mean preachers. And the preachers don't even pity the people. The people do them all kind of way. And then it seems like, it seems like, it's not that way that there's no help from God. If the preachers get right, come on, help me, brother. <laughs> when the preachers get this thing right and teach it right, things are supposed to change. Verse number six says, For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, saith come? the Lord. Why come, Father? Below, I will deliver the men, every one into his neighbor's hand, and into the hand of his king, and they shall smite the land, and out of their hand I will not deliver them. Hmm. Verse 7. And I will feed the flock of the slaughter, Verse even seven you. Says, and I will feed the flock of the slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. Hmm. And I will take unto me two staves, and I took unto me two staves, the one I called beauty, and the other I called bands. I want to show you who these two are, saints. Took two sticks or two staffs. One called beauty and the other one called band. Mm -hmm. I want to show you who these, who these are. And, 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 and I want to show you what beauty is going to do for band when they come in. This is what I talked about it. In the band and under the bond of the covenant, all of these things make a great difference, saints. This is why we got to know these things. Beauty have did some things for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. And I'm going to show you him in just a minute. I've been talking about him. I've been exalting him all week long. And if you, if you get this, he took his two staffs. Let me show you. We're going to read on it. I'm going to show you who they are here. Who they are. Read that verse again. And I will feed the flock of the slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two staves, the one I call beauty. That's and, Christ, that represents Christ. And the other I call Ben. That's the whole brotherhood. That's Judah and all of Israel. Everybody back together. Now he took him. I'm going to show it to you. He's going to read it. Everything that I'm saying is going to come out in just a second. He took them and joined his group of people back together. Read it. Verse number eight says... Three shepherds also are cut off in one month. Do it again, Cedric. Three shepherds also are cut off in one month. Why did God dismiss the preachers? Why come? Listen, he did it in one month, saints. And this is sad. Why did you do it? God, why did you dismiss, dismiss Eli? Why did you do away with Samuel? Three shepherds, read it again. I dismiss. Verse 8. Three shepherds also are cut off in one month, and my soul loathed them, and their soul ab also abhorred hmm. me. Read it. Then Read said it. I, I will not feed you. That that dieth, that that dieth, let it die. And that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off. Come on. And let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. Hmm. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder. What did I, they do, Cedric? And cut it asunder. Now, this represents Christ, and they do say, so I'm going to show you that. He took his staff, beauty. And what did he do to it, Cedric? I, and cut it asunder, hmm. that I might break my covenant which I had made with all the people. That's right, bad right there. He took Christ, and then listen, there don't, don't, ain't no need to cry about it. Listen, he's going to take the same one, all he did that, you remember when he told you in Jeremiah, he was a, even though he was a husband to you, all of Israel, and you didn't want him. You remember when Moses sprinkled the book, sprinkled the author, sprinkled the commandment, and sprinkled the people, and they didn't want the husband that God had made for them? Listen, he brought somebody in under a little bit different title, but the same person. He called him beauty here. Let me show you what he did here. Read it, brother. Uh, give me that verse again. Verse 11. Wait. 
Verse 10. Yeah, verse 10. And, it, and I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant which I had made oh, with all man, the people. Sad. He was a hub in which, and he wanted to get out money the covenant. Read it. And it was broken in that day. Hmm. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. Come on. And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. Who was it that was betrayed? Who was it say? I want to show you this beauty. I want to show you how he broke the staff with him. Broke the covenant with him. Because he was your husband man. And then I want to show you. He's going to take the same one. Because God is a God he can't lie. And restore the same thing back. Finish that brother. And the Lord said unto me, cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was priced at, at of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Yeah, come on, verse 14 says. Then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. No, what bond? That's bond. That, that was bond right there. The whole brotherhood, Judah and Israel, in other words, the whole 12 tribes. This thing is all messed up, saint, and it don't even have to be that way. This is why we talked about Easter and all of the other pagan holidays. It don't have to be this way. Why would you make your God mad at you to where he gets so mad to where he removed three preachers in one month? Why? And then especially in a holy season like this, now, I'm going to give you what make the season holy. It didn't have anything to do with what people celebrate Sunday, Easter. Passover and unleavened bread, what we're still in, this is what made the season to be so holy. God is not cutting off any of his flock in this season that's doing the thing that he said, but others that are doing other things. You're not in and under the bond and ban of the covenant. So he broke it. And, and like I say again, say, this is the sad thing. Why would you make him break the covenant with you? He was a husband to you. Women, those that have had good husbands, you know the importance of that. And even especially, now this one, what's called, call, you think about this one, all of you all young ladies, Marquette, Z uh, Marquisha, not you, son, Marquisha and Zaina, and all y'all want a good husband. Mary, all of you. This is the way I'm going to show you some things in here tonight by being under this blood thing that it'll help you with. Uh, read that 14 verse again. Then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Come on down to verse number 16. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land. He did, he did away with three of them in one week. Read it. Which shall not visit those that be cut off. Hmm. Which shall not visit those that be cut off. Neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that, that is broken. Nor feed that that standeth still. Hmm. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. Look around at what the preachers are doing. Read it. Verse 17. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. Listen, they're going to destroy his anointing. Whatever he had. That's all it is. Taking away his strength. His arm and his right eye. Read it. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly dark. Well, let's look at this thing. He sold it for 30 pieces of silver. Go back to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27 in verse number one, brother. Read that for me. Mm-hmm. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. How many pieces saying, of silver, Cedric? 30 pieces of this silver. This is the same thing that beauty back in Zechariah was betrayed for. They didn't have him, but was against one person that we're concerned with. Amen? Amen. Finish it, brother. This is Christ. He was beauty. He was the one that was portrayed for the 30 people of Shiva. He was the one that God took and broke the covenant. 
And see, I showed you this on the evening of the 13th. God took bread and wine and brought the first king of Israel in under the bond of the covenant. He took the same bread and wine and destroyed Saul. Saul died from the same thing that brought him in and took him out of here. And see, we don't, we don't get this, Ella Duncan. People don't understand that taking of communion without understanding is taking people out of here. What verse you at? Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed this innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. Judas, we don't care. You deal with that. We paid you for what you had told you. Read it. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. It never come out good for people like that. Never. Read it. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because oh, it is the price of blood. Look at the holy man there. He done jumped all holy. One minute he laid religion down and betrayed a man and talking good, bad. And now he done picked it back up and said, we can't bring that unclean money in the church. Hmm. Some type of people you are. Read it, brother. And they took counsel and brought with them the, and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore that field was called the field of blood what unto this day. The field of blood. Mm-hmm. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, Come saying, on. "What did Jeremiah? I want to see what what was fulfilled by Jeremiah. Read it, brother." And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value. All and, all of these things finna be fulfilled. This is going to be the blood of the new covenant. Read it. And gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. Mm -hmm. Come on down to verse number fifty. Let's show you. The blood of the new covenant, Christ our Passover. Verse number 50 says, did you get that? Did you get that? Yeah, 25, 23 and 25. And the governor said, why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. Hmm. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, hmm. saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just verse person. 24, verse 25. Then answered, oh, see ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and on our children. Listen here. The blood could have saved you and your children, but you made a foolish statement all because you wanted the wicked work done. Read verse 25 again, Cedric. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Listen, Saint, it wasn't supposed to be that way. It was, why would you want the blood of Christ on you? One thing to have somebody else's, but his blood? Come on down and let me show you the fulfillment of this new covenant. The, for what Jeremiah preached about. What Zechariah prophesied about. Let me show it to you in verse number 50. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the, gro the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. This is the beginning right here, saints, of what Jeremiah prophesied about. No more would he give you tassels and commandments and blood on your doorposts and lintels, putting the commandment there. He wrote it in your heart. This is the blood of when the blood of the new covenant started right here. At the death of Christ, when he gave up the spirit, when he gave up the ghost, your everything is predicated upon this. Read it. Read that verse again. Verse number 51. Mm -hmm. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake in the rocks rent. And the graves was... This is, this is why, saints, 1 Corinthians 5 and 7 said, Christ, our Passover, he gave his life for it. Let's look at this in Hebrew chapter 10 and verse number 1. He, the same one, saints, that took away the first one, he was a husband to you. He took beauty and broke the covenant. Said you didn't want to be in it no more. He broke the covenant. Let me show you what he's doing under the new covenant, saying what Jeremiah prophesied about. And just to be completely honest with you, he didn't change nothing. Nothing changed. 
The only thing that changed, he fulfilled the law of animal sacrifice and put us back under the order that we had been under when he established this thing in the beginning. Let's look at it. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. This and is the law of animal sacrifice. Thanks. It did have a shadow of good things to come. But what about it, Cedric? And not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. It, it couldn't do it. What Moses was doing when he sprinkled the book, sprinkled the altar, sprinkled the commandment and the people, that couldn't make you perfect. But the blood of the new covenant Christ our Passover, listen, and I can testify to this one tonight with all assurance, it can and it have did it for me. I have already qualified for things. I told you this the other day that nobody else would have done for me or let me do it. The blood qualified for you. It would make you perfect. Now this perfect goal much further than the average individual would think about. This perfect here, perfection here, the blood would make you God in other words. That's the perfection that you're looking for. And when I don't have time, we're not going to take time to look back there where Luke, where he told Herod that. Christ told him, you go tell that fox. Today, I heal the sick. Tomorrow, I raise the dead. But the third day, I'm going to be made perfect. Won't be no more dying for me. You won't have to worry about me crying. Eli, Eli, let me sit back there no more. For the same purpose that I came, I'm going to fulfill it all. When the veil in the temple was split, it gave me, saints, direct access within the family of God to be made perfect, to have my conscience clean and washed, saints, all through the atoning blood of my living Savior. Christ, the blood of the new covenant is right here. Christ, even our Passover. Read it. Come on down to verse number four. four. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. <laughs> and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins thou hast, hast no, thou hast had no pleasure. He didn't have no pleasure in it from the beginning. Read it, brother. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. <laughs> Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not. Neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. What are they offered by? By the law. That was offered by the law of animal sacrifice. Read it. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. He took away the first covenant. That he may establish the second. He didn't change anything. But your mind said, all he did, what Jeremiah said, he wrote it in your mind. He didn't change not one jot or tittle of the law. All he did was wrote it in your mind. And that way you can't say, well, Brother Mark didn't teach me. Brother Cedric, Brother Marquette, Brother LD. You don't, you can't say that. It's not going to do you any good if you do. Where you at, brother? Verse 10. Verse 10 says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. How often, Cedric? Once for all. And that's why, saints, we don't have to be did any of those other things anymore. All we, have, all he asks us to do, and then one for him, he could keep us, come back every day on the 14th day of the first month and renew the contract. I want you to know that it's still going on. This is what the Passover is all about, saints. Back up to chapter 9. Uh, chapter 9 in Hebrews in verse number 9. 9 and 9. See, this is what he talked about. The blood of the new covenant. Fulfill all of that that Moses them did. Hebrews 9 and 9. Read that, brother. Which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make them that did the service perfect. It couldn't make the preachers perfect. But look at me. Come on down to verse number. As pertaining to the conscience. Mm -hmm. You want me to skip? Yeah, down come to on 11. down to verse number 11. 11. 
But Christ being come in a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Read it. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he how, entered in once. How did he come, Cedric? But by his own blood. When the veil was split in the temple, say, this is why I told you, with fervent desire, I desire to eat this Passover with you. But I can't do that because I'm going to be the Passover. So I'm going to make sure that this thing is fulfilled. It's going to be dead brand new. I want you to get this, saints. He entered in with what, Cedric? By his own blood. With his own blood. Christ, our Passover. He gave his life for us. This is the blood of the new covenant. This is it, saints. And I know I've talked about this all around in different scriptures all week long, but I want to show you just how important it is. I don't want this to ever leave your mind. Time is winding down. And if you don't know anything else, you need to understand. This is why Paul said, oh, that I might know him. You need to know all about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ according to the scripture. Because if you don't get it according to the scripture, you have him died on Good Friday. And there's no way that you can get your count of the three days and three nights to even to Monday morning. Uh, probably gone. I don't even know when it'll be. Finish your verse there. Verse number 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy what place. What was the importance of it? Verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean san sanctify to the purifying of the flesh... How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Listen, that's all you need say. How much more with the blood of the new covenant? This is Christ, our Passover, what he did for you. Let me show for you how strong the blood was. Abraham, them wasn't under this new covenant. They was under the old covenant. Let me show what your, the blood of Christ did, saints. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. Under what, Cedric? Under the First so Testament. what did his blood do for those people with, under the First Covenant when he was a hovering to them even though they broke it? What did his blood do? They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. If that ain't good news, that's got to be some powerful blood. Even the people that died under the old covenant, under the law of animal sacrifice, the blood of the new covenant, Christ our Passover, went back and sanctified those people. If that ain't good news for you, saints, I don't know what is. That's why I say I don't know if you just believe the things that are written. I don't see how you can go off with some of these other things. People talking about Easter and these things like that. I don't see how you could go with that. Uh, Romans 5 and 8 and I want to show you here uh, we were justified by the blood we were saved by his atoning blood 1 John 1 and 29 said behold the Lamb of God what did he come for? he coming to do what daughter? to take it away the sins of the world my question is how did he do it? He did it, saints, by the blood of the Passover. Let's look at this in Hebrews chapter Romans. 9 again, in verse number 24. We're going to stay there. Hebrews 9 again, in verse number 24. We stopped off at 15, but Hebrews 9, in verse number 24. Read that, brother. For Christ, 24. Mm -hmm. for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. <laughs> with what, well, where did he go, Cedric? Which are the figures of the true, but unto heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Who did he go up there for? For us. He sit it at the right hand of God, making intercessions for people like me and you that sin. <laughs> I know that's good news. Amen, people? Amen. Read it. Number, number, verse 24. number 25. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. Let me show you why you better get yourself together. Verse number 27 said, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. That's the reason why you better get yourself together. But verse 28 is what we come for. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Listen. The key to it is unto them that looking for his second coming. He going to appear to them. You don't have to go nowhere to be with him. Read it again, Cedric. 
So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. He's coming back, saints. This is what we talked to you about the last two messages. That salvation, that salvation, that salvation. You better get it now. Let's, 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 let's close this in chapter 8, Cedric. Well, give me 7 and 22. Hebrews 7 and 22. Mm-hmm. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Of a better what now? Testament. He was made the surety of a better covenant, say, of a better testament, which was established, and I got to read it to you, which was established upon better promises. That what Moses and them did was good. It kept the people, but it couldn't take away their sin. It couldn't, it couldn't wash them. It couldn't make them clean. It couldn't make them God. But you look at me standing here tonight, saints. This is the blood of the new covenant Christ our past over, saints. This is what it'll do for you. And you can go ahead on, go ahead. It ain't, it ain't no, it ain't no harm. It ain't no, it shouldn't be any shame for you to call yourself God whom God have called you. It shouldn't be no shame to see yourself as God. Now what do God do? God creates things. How do they do them? They do them with their mind and with their mouth. In the beginning, darkness was all over the face of the deep. God didn't do them, but think about what he wanted. And you know what he did, brother? Psalm chapter 8. And God said, let there be. Whatever it was that he wanted, I wish that I could get that principle locked down in your mind. First, you got to have it, get it in your mindset. He told you everything about the blood. We read it to you last night out there 55. He don't need your money and your credit. I need your mind changed. Read it, brother. Uh, 7 and 22 again. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. <laughs> yes, he was. Come on into chapter 8 and verse number 1. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Let me say it this way. This is the main point of what we've been saying all night, saints. What's the main point of it, Said We have what now? We have, have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. This is the main thing that we've been trying to get to you all month long this is the main thing we hadn't preached anything else or just talk any persuasive word or anything the main point here is we have such a high priest that have moved through the heavens <laughs> and went back and sat down at the right hand of him that's most high come on read verse 2 for me a minister of the sanctuary. Who is it, Cedric? A minister of the sanctuary. He's a minister of the sanctuary. What and of the true tabernacle, in which the Lord pitched and not man. Hey, listen here. This is the one that God erected. Man don't have anything to do with this one. Verse number three said. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. <laughs> every high priest. Listen. Why do you think I've been working and doing all the stuff that I've been doing? Listen, I have a job. I, there are some sacrifices that I should give up and do things too. It wasn't enough with Brother Mark, you washed our feet. Yeah, that was a little bitty part, but that was some more stuff that I had to give up and do just as well for the saints of God. Every high priest, young men get this for those that's in this order and there's going to be older people. Every high priest. A time when you don't get to eat when others to eat. You don't get to do this and, and enjoy the, 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 the richness like what you see some preachers in this thing do. My legs ain't sore right here right now just because I've been sitting down all day reading and studying and just waiting. <laughs> Every high priest have offered sacrifice and gifts. And if every other one did, you know Christ was going to do more than what they did, Tammy. Verse number three says, 
For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have someone also to offer. Yes, sir. Let me show you what he did. Come on, read it. Verse number six said. For, but now hath he obtained. Verse number six said. But now hath that's he. That's what I'm talking about. This is the main point of what we've been saying all this season. Verse six said. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry. But how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Of a better covenant. Which, all, which was established upon better promises. Saints, you won't get anything any greater than that. He is the mediator. Of something that was established upon better covenant with better promises. Let me run your promises to you. I'm not going to take you back there. But let me run them to you in Roman chapter 9. Whom are the Israelites? For whom pertain to the adoption, the covenant, the glory, the service of God, the giving of the law, and the order? Because the answer. Now, if, if you got that and he's telling me he got something for you better through the blood saints. Come on now, Bible study group of Israel. Come on. Look at what you give mess up on. See, our people did this thing before. Jeremiah said he was a husband to you. And you didn't want it. So he took beauty and broke the staff. The whole thing broke. Cut the thing up. Messed it up. And you didn't have enough sense to read the scripture was. You can't divorce me. Because Jeremiah said, show me your certificate. God, you show me where you put me away at. They didn't have enough sense to go before him to do that thing. But he made it very simple. Took the same one that he broke the covenant with and brought you back under the bond of the covenant. And then he told you, this one here, I'm going to do greater things for you that most people can't even see. I'm going to establish you. He's the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises just for you. Read it, brother. Uh, seven. Seven, read it. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Well, nothing wrong with it. It was within the people. Read it. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. What are the days coming? Listen to that Jeremiah. See, Jeremiah, watch what Jeremiah prophesied right there. Behold, the days are coming. What you going to do, Lord? When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This is the same thing we started you with in the first scripture we went over. Read it. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by on, the brother. hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant. Because they continued not what said? In my covenant. He was a husband to you. I can't get that out of my mind. Read it, brother. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Hmm. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel what, after those what, days. What you going to do, Father? Saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind mm -hmm. and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Oh, that's good news. Read it, brother. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Do it again. See, this is what you have to get. Do it again, brother. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. I need this. I need this. I need this. Sister Jefferson, I need this. Sister Shanita, I need this. Every day. Riri, I need this. So you mean to tell me, you, yeah, Riri, we all baby, you mean to tell me I'm going to walk out from under this? What did he tell me he going to do, Cedric? For I will... I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. You mean to tell me, the unrighteousness is missing or breaking the commandment. You mean to tell me, if I do slip and mess up, he's going to be merciful until my, un now this is all predicated upon the blood of the new covenant, Christ our Passover, even Christ our Passover. Read the verse, verse 12 says, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Listen there, you couldn't make me trade that in for nothing. Balaam told Balak, I don't care if you give me houses full of silver gold. Give me all kind of cards and these different things. Listen, I don't want it if it's going to jeopardize this right here. Him being merciful to my unrighteousness, and then him removing my sins. 
are not remembering my sins or my lawless deeds? Read it, brother. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. <laughs> you better get in there, saints. I'm going to simply show you tomorrow a real simple message. We've got the living out. We clean the living out. I need you to stay out of it. Now, the marvel message is going to be about be careful of the shepherds that you listen to that's not teaching you the truth. Simple. Listen, we truly thank God for all of you all again that's viewing us on tonight. This is so, 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 so very important. The whole Bible study group of Red River have been with us the whole last nine days. Mostly everybody has been here, even with working. They've been here. We had those that have taken off work and been here. All because of what God commanded you to do. And again, my heart is filled with joy. Even to those of you all that have been viewing us over and over over these last seven days. Truly, I thank God for you. Sister Emerald Collins, God bless you. God knows, Emma, we're praying for you. Miss Robbie Lowry, God bless you. God knows we're praying for you. We're praying for you. We're praying for you. Thank you for taking time. Sister Kawanda, God bless you. We're praying for you. Mother Charzetta, God bless you. Our mother, we're praying for you. Brother Dexter, God bless you, brother. We're praying for you. Sister Franklin, God bless you. You're always a weirdness. Truly, we're praying for you. Miss Thompson, we're praying for you. God bless you. Thank you for always weirdness. To my Aunt Earth. Aline, bless you, bless you, bless you, for always listening to the thing. Miss Pearl Terry, God bless you, bless you. Uh, daughter, what's his last name you got on here? Come see if you see what she got, Marquette. Camille? She didn't have it, I can't pronounce it. Camille Dubo? Okay. Sister Camille, God bless you. My daughter's handwriting, I can't read it. <laughs> but listen, and to all others that fear us, passed away, God bless you, my brother. And to all others that fear us, truly, I thank God for you. And I pray and release the blessings of God just for, just for you viewing us. God promised just for you doing it. He promised that he would do some things for you. And I know he will. Any, any, anybody, anybody that's been viewing us, and if I'm wrong, you tell me. Anybody that's been viewing us, and you are just even looking into these things, if you just look into them, God is going to, God have did, and he's going to do greater things for you. God's been visiting you in your dream, like what I told you the other night. He's going to do those things. He's going to always support his wonderful word of truth. Not me, but he's going to always support his wonderful word of truth. So we bless God for you. Uh, we ask of you to come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. We will be in this place uh, with our last message. Tomorrow is the last day. Or today is the last day of Unleavened Bread. Uh, so we sadly we said we're going to be closing. We've enjoyed you. Bible study group of Israel, we've enjoyed you to the fullest. If you would stand to your feet. The brother is going to give you one long blast and we, we will dismiss tomorrow with our seven blasts. And just releasing more blessings over and into your life. Aaliyah, God bless you. What up, lifting hands, saints? One long blast, brother. Come on, give a shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah to the great God of Israel. We pray them. We bless God for you on tonight. Abigail, they've been bringing me a whole lot of water, so I had to go to the restroom. I didn't drink it tonight, so they're trying to short my message, man. But we love you. God